Jess. It's getting towards the end of the day and I realize I've been at my desk working for most of it. But before the sun goes down, I thought I might just show you my greenhouse outside. All right, guys, this is what it looks like. So I've got this actually, maybe I take a step back. So this is my greenhouse, guys. It's a, um, it's quite a cheap one from Bunnings. And Bunnings is an Australian homeware store. And I've got two. I think both, both of them cost me about, I think $25 when it was on sale. So they come with a number of these shells. But yeah, I thought I'd just do a tour for everyone. I actually should have just done a tour uh, a couple of weeks ago because what I did guys can you notice it's a bit clean I mean it would have been more helpful if I showed you what it looked like before but I actually really scrubbed this plastic because it was getting quite gritty I also was able to find this shade cloth which has been a blessing so it gives these guys it keeps these guys in the shade but guys this is an overview is a bit more empty uh, because some of the more juvenile plants actually bring indoors at night. But let's firstly start off with my Monstera Siltepicana. And this is the blue form, I believe, because his leaves are actually quite dark in color, which I thought was so amazing. When I first got him, he was a lot more green but I guess as he matures a bit, he does look a bit more blue, eh? The next Monstera next to him is my Monstera Strand, uh, Strandlana. And guys, I got this guy recently. Uh, he actually shouldn't really be living in my greenhouse because uh, I think he prefers warmer temperatures and it just gets too cold overnight. So what I might do as it gets cold over winter is to bring him indoors. So the Strandlana guys is a cultivar because the variegation has been encouraged and you can kind of tell because that variegation it's not that splodgy if that makes sense. It's actually not a lot of variegation but I still like him because he's a very nice specimen. We've got his moss pole. The next plant I have is this Ripsalis and guys this is one of my funkier plants. I really like him. I really like how he's quite lush. I think I actually should give him a bigger pot now because he's actually getting quite big. But he kind of chills. He's a very easy, low maintenance plant. And he kind of reminds me of Sideshow Bob with his hair. The next plant I have in here is my major, uh, my Decidia major. And this was the plank of wood that I got for him. I'm actually quite pleased with this plank of wood. Now, so he chills here. I am thinking about bringing him indoors because I think it gets too cold for him overnight. Because uh, he's starting to yellow. I think it's because it's too cold for him. But what I do every second day or so is I do spray him. And um, actually, I'll show you later. The, the door that I have for him, I do bring the door down to increase the humidity. But I think I'm going to bring him indoors because he's kind of, he's kind of yellowing. Ooh. So guys, the next plant I have is my Anthurium brownie eye. He's a little specimen. Oh, actually, I lie. Look at that. Look at that leaf, guys. He's getting quite leggy. And I think the reason for that is he's reaching for the light. Um, but I'm one of those people, I kind of like that my plants do their own thing. I like, I don't really like to trim them. I know that they can be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but um, I kind of like that they do their own thing. I think the weirder the plant, the more I like him. So, oh look, guys, he's got some new growth. How exciting. Uh, the next Anthurium in here is my Anthurium. Now this is a hybrid. It's the, the macro, macrobilium, macrobilium times uh, crystallinium and guys this was a uh, this was a impulse buy <laughs> um, I had to chop him up a bit because his leaves weren't doing too well 
This is a plant that I'm going to bring indoors because I think it's too cold for me outside. But yeah, he kind of chills in here. A tip, guys, is to... Oh, there's the tag. So he's not my mistake. He's not a crystallinium, but he's a crudatum times macrobilium. So that's him. Impulse by plant. Oh, tip, guys, is if you do have a plant that requires high humidity, do put some sphagnum because it does help retain the moisture. Moving along, I have my reverted Syngonium fantasy. He used to have this beautiful white foliage. I'm actually so glad that I got some footage of him with his variegation. Um, but yeah, I think he's reverted, guys. It's sad, but he's still a very nice specimen. Next to him, I've got my baby Anthurium vitrifolium. Now, this guy, he is a little baby. I could give him a better nursery because I don't think it's actually warm enough for him. But he sort of just chills here. Can't wait till his leaves get nice and long. His leaves are quite leathery. Um, but the actually, I do want a Anthurium patifolium where the leaves are more velvety in nature. So guys, this is my tassel fern. This is a oh, Herpesia cartonatum, Queensland variety. He's got tougher leaves, guys. And I've got to say, it's quite a, quite a chilled plant to take care of. So if you are getting into tassel ferns, I do recommend this guy. It's quite easy. I know tassel ferns need high humidity, but he seems to do quite well in here. I kept him outdoors all the time. I got him on sale but this is probably the price you do pay for a specimen that big i got him on sale for 40 bucks actually all right guys moving here this is my el salvador and look at that foliage it's so beautiful look his leaves are getting bigger i find that my monsteras they do like the plastic i feel like they like to attach themselves to the plastic but beautiful foliage, guys. And um, here I have my baby Thai constellation with little variegation. Now I think this is actually, I should, this should be another plant that I bring indoors because I think I could give him a better environment inside. But because Monsteras are quite sturdy plants, I've kept him outside for the moment. All right guys, so that is my top level. And that was the plastic door I was saying um, that I normally bring down during the day to increase the humidity. Now on the lower rung, you got some big ass specimens in here. Now the first one I have is my Philodendron Autumn Queen. Now this is a hybrid. Um, I forget the names, but I'll pop it, uh, I'll pop it right here. This is a hybrid philodendron and I do love it for its, its variegation and then how it starts off this orangey color and then goes to green. The next plant I have, this big fella. This is my Anthurium water, watermelons and he actually is a very well behaved plant because he's just given all this big foliage. He seems, every leaf seems to get bigger and bigger, which I'm super excited about. So he's, he's an anthurium that should be given higher humidity, but he seems to be doing quite well. So I'm very pleased, no complaints. Oh, and a new leaf. Look at that. Moving to the back guys. This is my anthurium polydactum. He is definitely one of my prized specimen because look at his size. I'm actually taken quite back by him because he's he's so beautiful. The other plant that I do want to add, which is very similar to this one, is the Anthurium polycism. Polycism. <laughs> um, which I'll show you guys a photo, which is very similar, but I really like I guess guys, hopefully, I don't know if you can tell, but the more unusual the plant looks, the more I like it. Oh, this guy, this is my, guys, I'm drawing a mental blank. I'm sorry, I'll have to, I'll have to um, refresh my memory, but his name escapes me, but he's got these beautiful whining leaves. 
All right, guys. This is my silver cloud, my philodendron silver cloud. I'm very pleased with her. She grows quite a bit. She's a big one. Very beautiful foliage. Just look at look at that leaf. Look at that leaf. It's so pretty. Ooh. All right, guys. So this is my painted lady. Isn't she a fabulous lady? She's a very, quite a big plant. Um, she's got amazing variegation and beautiful red stems. And um, yeah, I actually think this spot is too much shade for her. So I might actually bring her up a bit, but look at that amazing yellow, mottled yellow variegation. It really reminds me of a Monet painting. So she lives here, although I, sh I think I'm going to move her to a better spot. Guys, this is a better shot of her leaves. It's beautiful. Guys, the last one is my Philodendron Pistazium. Beautiful leaf. Again, I really love this plant for its foliage. I think it's getting too cold for him. You can see some of his leaves becoming a bit tattered. I think I might bring him in indoors, but beautiful leaf. I love the texture. Ah, he's my little baby. But guys, this is the lower level of my greenhouse, my outdoor greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, in summer, in the height of summer, this is very, this is a spectacular sight because it's very lush, but I guess I guess in summer it's a little bit uh, colder and so um, and some of my plants I'm going to be bringing them indoors because uh, it gets too cold. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Guys, I will definitely see you tomorrow. I hope you are enjoying these videos. I think I'm going to make a point to change um, this hoodie. I have been wearing this hoodie for the past two or three days. <laughs> um, but I will change I will have a costume change tomorrow. Hope you are well and um, I'll see you tomorrow.